Hi everybody, my name is Anne McElhenney. And I'm Phil McAleer. And, and welcome to the Anne and Phil Scoop. What a few days we've had. What a few days we've had. Oh my God. And what a day we've had. What where a few where days. are we now? Where are we now? Well, we've been having an extraordinary time um, with Adam Baldwin yes. in a studio in Santa Monica yes. recording the IG report verbatim. word for word, verbatim. And so those wow. who don't know, the Inspector General's report has just landed um, uh, this week. And it's, you know, if, if you want to know what's in it and what what you should think about it, go to our last podcast with Molly Hemingway, which uh, we did in Washington. Um, why were we in Washington now? Oh, because we won a prize. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yes, actually, uh, that's a good thing. We should actually talk about what we're going to talk about today. So yes. we are going to talk today about the IG's report. Inspector we're going to talk report, about the yes. fact that, oh, why were we in D.C.? Oh, <laughs> yes, we, ha, 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 ha. we did. We won a prize. Yes. One of the um, actually very honoured to win an Impact 2019 reward, um, which was presented. Um, anyway, we'll tell you all about that in a moment. We're going to also talk about um, the different treatment of Michelle Obama versus Melania Trump mm-hmm. by the media, and particularly some really egregious stories that have emerged recently that are just horrible and awful. Um, we're going to talk about um, some TV. We're going to talk yeah. about food. Um, and in fact, actually, because we've been on the road an awful lot, we're, I, have, I have a recipe that is... Really easy, really comforting, and exactly what to cook when you have no energy, um, but really don't want to eat out, but, and don't want but to take be, out. But be careful about the fire alarm. But be careful about the but fire just alarm. just smoke alarm. Yes, so wait till the end and you'll hear about that. Yes, that actually is an issue um, that we had. Yes. But uh, actually, our t- fire alarm did not go off. But Only because I opened every window and door in the All right, in, in okay, the, all right, all right. So that's enough. And that's Mr. Scaredy Cat is up. Yeah. So we've been away for quite a few days because of this trip to Washington and, and, and other parts unknown. Yes. Um, and the cats are a bit over all over our biz because of that and actually yes. talking of animals i want to do a quick shout out to stephen crowder whose dog has just died um seven years um that he got this dog from a from a rescue we've met we've met the dog we've met the dog his, name, his dog. name escapes us now is it um boomer i think it was boomer yeah. um but a fabulous dog and it's really sad and actually yeah. if you want to read something Lovely fabulous, dog. you'll you'll read it read all about the dog on um on stephen's um Instagram account. Did you okay, see? Go back. Did to you the, see how many actually. likes or he got for the for the Instagram post? How many likes do you think? So he wrote about his dog and a beautiful picture of his dog, and he wrote lovely about his dog. The dog itself, by the way, film had its own um, Instagram account, I believe. So well, how many know. how many thingies did he have on the Instagram? Page? I don't know, Philip, but you're going to tell me now. Eighty four thousand. Okay, right. I wanted to, I want to ask you about the IG report. Scurdy, so, you've a lot to live up to, Scurdy. Oh, and by the way, sorry. And the other thing we're going to talk about this evening uh, today, and of course it's evening time. I may have to have a little beer here at one stage. Uh, we're going to also talk about some TV we've been watching recently, yeah. and quite extraordinary what has been. You know, what's happening? So, you know, we were watching um, the new season of Mrs. Maisel, but we were also watching the new season of uh, The Crown. And we were also watching... watching well, oh, the final... Yeah, the final... And we saw My the final. guilty little secret. Phil's okay. guilty okay. little secret. Okay, Deeply please embarrassing. people respect me. We have no respect for you when you hear this. You'll have no respect for I you have been watching pretty much from the beginning... No, no, I, I, I just feel nervous, and, and it's like a therapy group. Madam here. Secretary, Madam Phelan's, Secret- gui- Phelan's guilty little secret is that he likes Madam Secretary, and so we have just watched this past weekend the series finale, the series finale, and the series finale of Madam Secretary, which ta- has something uh, w- very interesting in ca- in, which, in common and also with Mrs. Maisel. With Mrs. Maisel, and if you want to know what the next political issue is going to be, you should you watch need, it. You need, I, I've you heard, I've that. noticed this bubbling up, and now it's in two programs two tv two program. super you know very very uh, popular yeah. programs yeah. one on streaming and one on tv yeah All so right. we'll talk we'll come back to that we'll come back to that but we're going to start today by looking at the ig report and just to tell everyone that as as we mentioned at the top of the at the top of the show we have the wonderful adam baldwin the actor who was in full metal jacket who was in chuck um who was in the Fire last F- ship and firefly, firefly. who ha- who is also um you know a nominated um winner uh, nominated for an award for his um, reading oh. of some Audible books. Yes. So he's really wonderful. And he reads Sorry verbatim, for laughing. Sorry for laughing. Re- but reads but verbatim, Top Cat is, is, is reads, tearing Magda's coat okay, apart. He, he, reads, he reads verbatim, word for word, the words of the IG report. And, yes. we, and you have it available to you on every platform for free. And I think it's a great way for people who'd really like to read the details of the IG report to get it but in your car, time. in your train, yeah. you know, when you're commuting, going out for a, wa- for, for a hike. And it's beautifully read. Can I just say the last couple of days of listening to it have just been amazing. I mean, it really is great. Yeah. And, you know, the, the reason we did it verbatim was because 
the mainstream media is going to cherry pick a line or two to, to say that Comey was, uh, you know, exonerated or Lisa Page and Peter Strzok were exonerated. You know, this is to, this is the truth unfiltered, right? And boy, I mean, it's funny. It's exactly what Molly Hemingway said last week about about this Inspector General. Yeah, he, did. he delivers absolute bombshells and then gives the most benign interpretation of that bombshell, like the FISA report, the FISA court scandal is 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 shocking. Like it's breathtaking, but you know. And to be fair, he's, they're now going back and they're going to analyze every FBI FISA application for the last 10 years to see uh, if, it, if it filled the criteria. But people need to go to jail for this, but they, they're not. There's no recommendation of any, of, of any kind of criminal prosecution. There's no, you know, there's, in fact, the, the inspector general says, oh, no, they had enough evidence to launch the investigation into Trump even without this dodgy FISA application. And, and the reality is... There's almost no barrier bar for an, I, you know, a senior FBI agent can almost decide to set up an investigation for any reason if he's suspicious about anyone. But the FISA application is supposed to be in front of a court that was, and the funny thing is, there was a lot of lo- layers and lawyers that it went through, layers, lawyers, and liars it went through. See that? I just did their layers. No, it did, and I, I mean, yeah, we're li- we're listening to that by the way in yes. excruciating yes. detail in the, and, in and the report. So, However, but there was seventeen. This, um, is a, this is an incredible fact. Uh, remember that fact. Listen Seventeen errors, omissions, whether we call them lies, that that they withheld from the FISA court and from the, their own lawyers, uh, who who were you know who were supposed to second guess these FISA applications and make sure that they were legal, that they withheld. And you know, it's hard to believe. You know, so seventeen. And what are you know? Let's just look at some of them here. I, I've I've written a list of them. Um, you know, so. It's the Carter page. So Carter page, they, they, they you know, they were uh, Steele, uh, Christopher Steele. And that's a not, it's a joke. Uh, the the F, a former MI six agent who did this, who literally, and and, and this is what you know. We say, oh, I heard of met a guy in a pub. He literally met a girl in a pub. Yeah, yeah. Who who joked with him, and later on she said, I was only joking. I was only messing. I was only just saying stuff that came into my head. He put it in this report, sent it to the FBI, and. The FBI then used it to launch an investigation and then used it to get the Carter Page uh, FISA warrant. But that wasn't enough. So they, they om- as he says, omitted information. Another word for omitting information is lying, by the way, hmm. right? Yeah. So Carter Page, right? So Carter Page had contacts with Russians. He did. By the way, lots of people have contacts with Russians. Bernie Sanders went and stayed in Russia. He did his honeymoon there, I believe. God between us, no yes. harm. Seriously, uh, and that was he back when honeymooned well. in Russia. I mean, it's never no one. I never heard the like. Anyway, that's back when it was a Soviet. And horrible when, yeah, Soviet. yeah when, it, when, it, when it was even more black and white than it is mm-hmm. now, or more sepia tinted. So Carter Page has contacts with Russians, and they omitted from this FISA application that he he that pri- the Page had a prior relationship with another government agency. And I think another government agency is uh, spook speak for the CIA, hmm. right? So Carter Page would come back and debrief the CIA about his meetings with these Russians. So that's, so he, 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 so he would go there and yes, and of course that actually kind of encourages him to meet Russians so that he can go. So he's a patriot, but that wouldn't have fitted well with, we think this guy is a traitor to his country working with Russia when he's actually working for another agency. Now the other agency told him told them about this. They they said they don't, they don't remember hearing that, and then the other agency came back later on and said, "We told you about that." You know, uh, they renewed it four times, and so they renewed the FISA application four times. Yes. Each each FISA application I think lasts for ninety days. Is that yes, correct? Yes, and you know, here's omitted information relevant to the reliable of person one who was Christopher Steele, Steele's sub-source. So Christopher Steele, Steele had no original investigation. It was all people he met who were telling him these things. And, you know, but they, they, they neglected to tell the FISA court that as well. They, they pretended that it was all source information from, from Christopher Steele. Um, they, oh yeah, so they, they said that they thought Carter Page was in a conspiracy with Manafort and a conspiracy with, with other people. So they secretly recorded Christopher 
Carter Page uh, with 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 a with one of their FBI agents, and Car- they asked Carter, "Do you know this guy Manafort?" And he goes, "Oh, Manafort." He goes, "I can't. I don't. I've never met him. And you know what? He won't answer my emails." <laughs> yeah, actually, this thing I keep writing to him, you know, because Carter, you guys, Manafort was a very, very successful businessman and had a lot of contacts over there. And I think Carter Page was looking to do some business, and he wrote to Manafort. And his complaint to this guy was he won't answer my emails. But they went to the FISA court and said they thought he was in a conspiracy with Manafort, and that was why they needed the FISA. You know, so it just goes on. I mean, I've written the list here. Um, I think the point that you made earlier that I that I, that really rings true with me is that. So for these FISA for these FISA warrants, mm-hmm. for, in order to do this extraordinary, basically surveillance um, uh, and wiretapping of American citizens, mm-hmm. you know, this, which is really extreme and an extraordinary thing to have happen, that for those FISA warrants there were seventeen errors mm-hmm. or omissions, seventeen errors or omissions, and you made the really good point, Philem, that you know that you had just recently yes. been looking for you know for insurance for house insurance, house insurance. Well, well, first of all, if you make seventeen mistakes on your uh, uh, Inland revenue, your IRS form, you go to jail, right? That's a that's a you know that's a really good way. That's a great takeout from this. If you did this with your IRS, which is not quite as serious as this yes. serious yes. situation, obviously it's serious from a personal point of view. This is serious on a national level. You would literally go to prison for this for these number of, of if of you errors. made one mistake, if you made one, if you made one mistake, right? It would be very serious for the IRS. Two, you, you, you'd be you'd be face penalties. You know, you, you, if you you know if you if you did, uh, but seventeen has to be prison. I mean, and also you I, said the same thing, by the way. So that if you had taken out, if we had taken out um, a like house insurance, yes. or a, oh yeah, you said uh, no a loan. So we we recently tr- applied to refinance our mortgage or whatever, and boy, the questions, right? Oh, right. And yeah. uh, you know, if if we had answered one of them wrong, it would invalidate the terms of our yeah. loan, right? Yeah. 17. 17, I, yeah. Like, it's, uh, the question is, would we actually go to jail? And there's a good, there's a good chance you would. Yeah. Because so, it's like... I mean, I, I, you were with me the other day when I got a phone call from Ireland, you know, yeah. and it was, it was about house insurance for a house over in Ireland. And, you know, this is for a rinky... This is a, an insurer in a rinky-dinky town in Ireland. And, yeah. this, and they were said... Just let you know this phone call is recorded. Oh, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, because they're gonna like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ireland is real phone call. Oh, oh yeah, right, they're recording right. the phone call. They're recording the phone call, yeah, and, they, and they ask me all these questions, right? About uh, you know, uh, was a house being Airbnb? Was it being rented? Was it you know, was it being left alone for long periods of time? All these things, right? If I'd have got one of those wrong, we would not be insured. Yeah. If I'd have got seventeen of them wrong, I could be charged with fraud. It's amazing. It's incredible. But they got they went in front of a FISA court and made seventeen omissions. So that's a that's for me and, that's and a really got the big warrant. that's a for me that's a really big takeout. I think the other takeout Phelan, was that um, we got some more information in the last few days about Struck and Lisa Page, right? Ah, uh, God bless them. And him. do you have like do you, I think you might have a quote or two that you that might be nice to share with us. Well, everyone's going to get to hear this stuff, by the way, because obviously we're recording all of this right now. But yes. uh, with the IG's report, with the full IG's report, which you can hear and you can get, by the way, by going right now to the Alan Film Scoop. Hear the IG report. Yes. Dot com. Oh, hear the IG report. Hear the IG report. Dot com or the Film Scoop. Hear, Everything is living there. Hit the A R the IG report and dot IG. Com. Report. And if you want to share com. this with somebody else, if you if there's somebody out there that you know who'd really like to hear the IG's report, just send them that. Tell them that they can just go hear the IG report. Dot com and they can get to hear the whole thing read by Adam Bolton. Is that we, cat destroying those cats our are chair? Destroying, okay, they're destroying um, the stool in the background there. Um, <laughs> let's see if we can keep going yes. before they yes. before uh, all the furniture falls to pieces yes so so you know i've just if you want to know what happened between struck and page the two fbi lovebirds who were having the affair co- uh, struck uh, struck it has emerged was basically in charge of the um the russia report uh, the russia hoax investigation but some you know great great scenes in this though so comey james comey you know that that upstanding citizen, uh, told the Inspector General, oh, no, no, the White House didn't know anything about this report. We weren't taking any orders from the White House. Obama was not, you know, I, Obama was not uh, supervising the investigation of a political opponent because he, he wouldn't do that. But then the Inspector General 
uh, found these messages between Strzok and Page. So now we're getting more pe- more messages, more uh, uh, IMs yeah. uh, between the two. And here here's an example. So it's Strzok, who you know, who is a bit of a uh, film. Just careful now. Yeah, I know, but I mean, who's a bit of a Russia expert? No, yeah, <laughs> is that what you were going to say? Phil? <laughs> Oh, he's just a hor- he's just such an arrogant person. He's very arrogant. I think you oh, can yes. definitely say that. And, people and, have and seen he's that. so boastful as well. Actually, and you'll see how he is. Go to uh, fbilovebirds.com. You'll see Dean Cain play Struck and uh, brilliantly Christi- play Christy Swanson play. Uh, Even the Guardian had to acknowledge yes, that. Yes, play Christy Swanson play Lisa play- Page. Lisa Page. And uh, you know, people can see that. You can, see, can see the whole thing for, at FBI I mean, Struck, he was the kind of guy who who'd go to a meeting and uh, steal. Christy Swanson or steal Lisa Page's ideas and not give her any credit and then tell her about it. You know, yeah, yeah. and not think there's any problem. But anyway, so nine forty one a.m. struck to Lisa Page. Check out my nine thirty meeting on the seventh. You know, boasting, right? You know, like a child. I can tell you why. I can tell you why you're having that meeting. And then Str- and Struck says, "It's not what you think." And she says, "No." She says, "Lisa Page to Struck. It's not what you think." All right, and Strzok says, Talk, talking points for the director. And she says, yes, because POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. Yeah, so so, so Comey is saying, no, no, we didn't, no, the White House, no, never knew anything, wasn't involved. And then next thing, here it is in black and white, Lisa Page saying P- POTUS wants to know everything they're doing. Of course he does, because he didn't want Donald Trump to become president. So other things... <laughs> Actually, um, I'll leave that to the last one. So then, yeah, so there's just a, a line in it. The Crossfire Hurricane team, which is the Russia investigation to Trump, were selected by Strzok the, and the Intel section chief. So Strzok selected, Strzok, who had written messages and emails saying, Trump's not going to get elected, we're going to stop it. We need to start the Russia investigation as insurance policy in case he gets elected. Struck chose the personnel for the Russian investigation. I'm sure he chose very fair-minded and, oh, yeah, and, and, and reasonable people. That's right. And then independent, independent thinking types. And then um, they, you know, and and the Inspector General, you know, reminded us of some of the absolutely horrible and you know biased emails that were exchanged between the, the two of them. And if anyone out there tells you he cleared Struck and Page, he didn't. He said, to be honest. I cannot be sure, but I think that they were politically biased, but I have no evidence that they were, because they didn't say we're politically biased, but you cannot be sure that giving these text messages that their bias did not in- interrupt their work. You know, and, and, and there's, you know, you know, struck, struck uh, you know, uh, 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 this is Lisa Page. You read, read Lisa Page there, huh? Lisa Page, and Trump should go F himself. And Struck rep- responded, and F Trump, and he's such a he's such a panderer too. Like he's you know, yes, I like you, and you know, and then and then Page replied, "This is not to take away from the unfairness of it all, but we are both deeply fortunate people." And then she forwarded him another news article and texted, "And maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you're meant to protect the country from that menace." And Struck said, "Thanks, it's absolutely true that the- we're both very fortunate, and of course, I'll try and approach it in that way." I just know it'll be tough at times. I'm, I can protect our country at many levels. You know, I can protect... This is the man who's running the Russia investigation, talking about protecting then, the country from the menace. And I want to just add this, and we're going to get away from this now. Two days later, on August the 8th, 2016, Lisa Page texted Struck, Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Right? And, he and said, Struck replied... No, he's not. We'll stop it. Yeah, so of course, no media, no no political bias there. These are the kind of people that you could really trust doing the Russia investigation. Can I just have, throw this one in at the end? So, um, uh, McCabe, who was Lisa Page's boss and, and priest staff, he was a senior investigator. He didn't want uh, P- Struck working so much on the Russia investigation uh, for, for, for unusual reasons. And here's, here's the lines from the, from the report. According to McKay, Priestap expressed frustration about the amount of time Page and Struck were spending together. And it's like, oh. Talking talking about casework. Talking about casework. (laughs) And it's like, I think we're doing a little bit more than talking about casework. Yes. And, uh, you know, so I think, you know, that might be some kind of FBI uh, euphemism. Were you talking about casework? So anyway, the Inspector General, it's, 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 John Le Carrier meets Teen Romance magazine meets Deep State Gone Mad meets Anti-Democratic Coup. You have to listen to it. 
put it on your car, put it on in the morning, put it on before you go to bed at night. Uh, it's here. And by the way, here the I, IG and, report. And by the way, Adam Baldwin, who is who's reading the IG's report, it is a truly epic, <coughs> excuse me, task that he has to go through this uh, report and read every word verbatim. Um, and it's a really wonderful thing and a great. And you know, why don't you just go on Twitter? Those of you who are on Twitter, why don't you go on Twitter and do a shout out to Adam because he's a rock star? Yes, yes. <laughs> the cat. He's now destroying. Oh, he wants to put his head through there, you see, because it's nice. And he wants okay. to be seeing it a little small, little. Oh, God. Oh God. You're really not funny. Scaredy cat is, is going so a little I bit crazy. So I want to move on well, to. Well, actually, I want to talk about something. Um, oh, remember quick. last week with Molly, we talked about. Um, and this is something that journalism uh, journalists are going to have to tackle. You know, this thing of anonymous sources, oh, right? Oh, yes, you did talk about that. Yeah. And, you know, I think we. You know, Journalists love talking about journalism, but actually none of them like talk about this kind of thing because it, it really gets to the heart of of what's wrong with journalism, and it's and and it means journalists have to work harder to solve it, right? But you know, on the face of it, there's nothing wrong with anonymous sources, but you just can't say sources close to the administration or senior Republicans or senior Democrats because, as we said last week. You know, senior Republicans can mean everyone from Bill Crystal, who hates Trump with a passion, mm -hmm. to, you know, Trump's daughter, you know, or son-in-law who, who, who love him and are totally loyal to him. You know, so you can put in a senior Republican who says something negative about Trump and you think, oh, that means there's division in the ranks. No, it's just another. So you have to say a senior source who is normally opposed to Trump, who is right. normally loyal you have to, to give Trump. Some context. You have to give context. And, yeah. you know, this came out actually in this report, uh, in the Inspector General's report. So there was a Yahoo, the first uh, indication the FBI were investigating Trump was a Yahoo News article. And uh, it it quoted a senior, where is it, a senior Western intelligence source, right? Oh, yes. And you see, that was Christopher Steele. Right. A senior Western intelligence source. Now, when you read that, that sounds like somebody who's high up in MI6 or the CIA or the FBI. It's not the guy who's been paid by Fusion GPS to write a report to help Hillary Clinton win the election. And... By the way, it's not like the reporter didn't know because at the meeting, at the briefing, the Yahoo News reporter briefing, was someone from Fusion GPS, the, the, the company that hired Steele on behalf of the Democrat Party. So he, it's wrong to say, it's, you know, you should say a, a, a former intelligence officer who still has a lot of contacts, who was working for getting paid a lot of money by the Democratic op operatives to, to write Apple research for the Democrats. Now, there's nothing wrong with him then say, producing a blockbuster report, but when you read that context, you'll it take it... Yeah, it, tur it certainly changes the colour of the story. You take it with a grain of salt, yeah, right? But, yeah. but but a fact's a fact, and if he can produce facts, it doesn't matter where it comes from. All great sources have motives. Yeah. All the best sources you know, ha want their story out for a reason. That We all know that. Sometimes it's good reasons. Now the cat has jumped on... The cat has actually managed to turn on the, the printer. printer. which I've been trying to turn on all night and failing. So, scaredy cat, you're so... You're that is quite extraordinary. He actually has, has turned has on has a actually, printer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, scaredy cat. Okay, uh, that's a very nice break in the... Uh, but we're going to keep we're going to keep going at the same yes, time. Yes, no, in yeah. the sense that we move on there we're from on, the Inspector General's on. report. Uh, so the next thing that we want to talk about actually is yes, why were we in Washington D.C.? Oh. Shockingly, <laughs> very excited and humbled and proud of receiving an Impact 2019 award, which mm -hmm. was awarded by the way in the beautiful presidential ballroom at the Trump Hotel in Washington D.C. And to be among the company of people who also got awards, um, including Mark Meadows, Michelle Malkin, mm -hmm. uh, Justin Danhoff. Um, Eric Cochran, yes, and the Google. in fact, also the, the one of the awards was for Jordan Peterson, who unfortunately couldn't come mm -hmm. to the award ceremony. As many of you know, he's been um, been very, very ill um, and has been in rehab and stuff. So um, we we're very sorry that we didn't get to meet him. But it was a wonderful occasion. Yeah. We're just going to watch a little tiny piece of it now, um, and it was just a, a wonderful thing. And we're we're very proud to have been so chosen on this. Let's on roll this, the tip on there. This occasion. These two talented leaders, wonderful conversationalists and speakers and friends to many of us, 
are, are from California and we're so glad they're here. Ann and Phelan, in recognition of your courage, skills, and tenacity to tell stories that change how people see the truth and think about it, we proudly bestow this Impact Award on both of you as a couple. What do we do? As, as Ginny said, we do the FBI Lovebirds, which is our play, the, the text messages of Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. But the left hit when the right go into the arts and entertainment because they know how powerful it is. So six days before the play was supposed to go on stage here in DC, the venue pulled the venue. They, they canceled the contract and they said no more. We were managed to get a venue at the last moment. I did, we did Ferguson, which is a play based entirely verbatim on the grand jury testimony of, of, of the shooting of Michael Brown uh, in Ferguson, Missouri. And it showed that there was no hands up, don't shoot. And this was the voices of minorities telling the truth on their oath. What happens? Nine of the actors walked out during rehearsals because they couldn't handle the truth. I was talking to someone earlier and I said, you know, if I'd made a fictionalized play about it, they would have been able to handle that because it's fiction. When it's the truth, they really hate it. And when it's compelling and entertaining, they really, really hate it. And that's what we need to do more of. So that was very nice. Yes. So yeah, yeah. And, we st and it also involved two uh, all expenses paid nights in the Trump Hotel. Which was very, very nice, I have to say. Yes, we loved it. Well, no, but the pillows. Okay, we had a pillow problem. We definitely had a pillow, had a pillow problem. problem. Yes, yes. The, the, the pillows Trump, were very, very soft. The Trump pillows are too soft. Well, and we like really hard pillows, so that's just who we are. We're not exactly the my pillow pipe types. Where we need. Uh, I, I'm, I'm somewhere in between my pillow and, and and soft, but they were just too soft. They Your were head very, very sunk soft. right into yes. them. So that know, was our only criticism. That was our only criticism. Everything else. I have to say the room. Was, the room. Well, by the way, two things. The room was extraordinary, but the second thing about the place was I thought that the service was off the charts. Yes. Like literally off the charts. I haven't come across service like that. And the great thing really about the Trump time. Hotel is that you Oh yeah, it's a safe space. So when you're in there, everyone everyone know it's like walking into a private club that you're not a member of, if you know what I mean, but that you are a member mm -hmm. of, even though you didn't know you were. Because you walk in there and you suddenly realize that there's no way that there's anyone in there um who uh, who wouldn't who would who would who would be who would be politically antagonistic towards you. Right, exactly. You're unlikely to meet someone who's gonna be horrible to you. Yes. So it makes people all very relaxed. And you notice people like in the lobby, and I recommend anyone to go because it's really lovely. To, when, and it's beautifully decorated, yes. by the way, gorgeous For with the Christmas trees and all of that. But also, you know, people are like really nice to each other and everyone's kind of waving at each other and even you know I'm putting uh, chat on and each yes, other and when people are sitting down at tables they talk to the they person start, you know they're like hey how are you doing because they know and you're kind of when you're on your own you can sort of eavesdrop on the next conversation and sort of join I, the next conversation because everyone is sort of uh, yeah and agreement, they're all out trying to on a and they're all out trying to conservative conservative each other the woman the people beside me started talking to the people beside them and I, I, I laugh and I hear her saying I get up at 5 a.m. and I listen to Hannity and then there's Trump, then there's uh, oh, Ma Mark uh, Levin, Mark Levin and, and, and uh, Rush Limbaugh, and then I go over to Fox, and then I go back and to Laura Ingram. I do the five. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So, yeah, no, so very it's, happy. It's full of very, very nice and very interesting people. So the next story that I want to go on to actually um, is interesting, um, and it's really to compare, and it's been it just it's just unbelievable. And I've meant to say this for a few times, but we, the, the the podcast has been so busy. But honestly, to compare the treatment of Melania Trump and Michelle Obama by the media, particularly the Washington Post in this particular case, and The Guardian, it's really, really awful and really instructive. And by the way, for anyone listening to this, maybe who has young young people um, that they're trying to ed educate and um, uh, explain the media bias to, it's a really good way of doing it, is to look at the treatment of these two first ladies. Um, the Guardian used the word vapid. They used the word vapid to describe Melania Trump. Hmm. Phelan, what does the word vapid mean? Uh, it's like empty. Empty, yeah. Um, uh, Silly. Bland, bland, no meaning, yeah. you know, empty. Like, it could, you know, so, so here's how but you describe... But by the way, she can say the word vapid in five languages. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. So the person, yeah. I doubt the person who wrote and described her as vapid can speak five languages yes. fluently. Like this, like this girl who is an immigrant to this country, an extraordinary 
extraordinarily beautiful but they can't criticize her enough and many of you will have seen and we're going to put it up on the screen right now this this recent picture of her looking really gorgeous and elegant and beautifully beautifully uh, dressed walking through the White House with these really gorgeous uh, Christmas decorations um, and she's wearing you know she's wearing a dress coat over you know she's a dress and then a dress coat really gorgeous um, outfit and uh, the Washington Post called the coat ridiculous you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, here, here's what I, I want to, I'm just questioning whether or not the Washington Post would think of a few things that I, th- let me tell you a couple of things I think might be, that I think are worth looking at as ridiculous. Do you remember a few years ago, um, uh, Obama talked about, you know, there comes a stage, there comes a particular stage when, there comes a particular stage um, when, you've just- when you've just got enough money. Uh, Obama said, you just come to a stage when you've just got enough money. And I'm going to shamelessly read from the New York Post article on this, and it's so fabulous. You know, and the, the headline they have is, Michelle Obama's new book is just another craven cash bra- grab. So the Obamas, you know, not content with more than 10 million books sold, a Netflix deal in the high eight figures, a joint publishing advance with husband Barack Obama worth 65 million, 65. a highly profitable world tour, Speaking fees that by now surely average around half a million dollars per, and a recently acquired waterfront Martha Vineyard mansion purchased for 15 million. Michelle Obama is back with another craven money grab. So you remember she wrote this book, Becoming. You will not believe. I, I, I actually, when I read this first, I actually genuinely didn't believe it. I, I, I rechecked it, was a joke. it. No, I've rechecked it a yeah. number of times because I really that was a hoax, had actually. a problem believing it. So now, here's what she's come out with printed on cream writing paper with a gross, uh, gross grain ribbon, foil stamped cover, and removable half jacket, becoming a guided journal for discovering your voice. A guided journal so for she discovering. Hasn't written it. It's not. It's a journal, right? With little, with little page, but, 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 little but suggestions. Just, just to read how bad this is, right? So she's created because the book, which sold, obviously, what do we say? Ten there? million. Ten million. Now she's got this journal. Here's the things that the, you know, and the, the you know, the media have n- without any kind of sense of uh, criticism of any kind, they they are letting her have a buy ball on this. Here's what that journal is made up of. List 10 fun things you like to do. Create a playlist of 10 songs that you could listen to on repeat. Listen, list your 10 favorite movies. What? List 10 outings you've been on with your family. Look outside a window in your home. Write down what you see. I mean, I am not joking here. Let me read a few more because honestly, this is really worthwhile. Do you have any favorite quotes? Capture them here. List, I mean, list, list, what do you say? List 10 things you noticed on your way home today that no one else may have noticed. I mean, BuzzFeed are crap, but at least they do the lists for yeah, you. But th- So she has created this journal. And if you don't, so her husband has said recent, you know, a couple of years ago, there comes a stage at which you've just got enough time. You've just, sorry, there comes a stage at which you've got enough money. Well, you know what? The Obamas don't have enough money and no one is calling them out for this. So on top of the journal, this ridiculous journal that she's now flogging, by the way, she also has a merch, a shop where she's selling merch. And we're going to put up a bunch of this merchandise, her becoming merchandise. And are the proceeds going to cure cancer, Phelan? Are they going to solve the climate catastrophe? I think they're going to solve the... uh, The uh, unbelievable uh, greed of the Obamas is what they're going to try and cure. That's a huge problem. That is a massive problem. That's bigger than climate change. Well, you know what? Because it's unsolvable. It's incurable. Their greed is incurable. We should have a a run, have a sponsored run. Honestly, I have to throw up some of this stuff here. Throw up. Do you like that? We're going to throw up some of this stuff on the screen because that's all I feel like. Michelle Obama... Tell me your story, tote bag. You can't make this... This is why I didn't believe it. No, I thought it was a joke. The Michelle Obama becoming bookmark. By the way, $10. The tote bag is is $30. Michelle Obama, find your voice, zip up hoodie, $65. Michelle Obama, find your flame... Tank top. I thought it was going to be find your flame. Uh, find your what throw call up. That? Vaping. Fi- no. I'm throwing this up. Thirty five dollars. Michelle Obama signature gray hat. 
$35. Signature gray and hat. On and Michelle, on and Michelle on. Obama doesn't, Michelle isn't Obama. known for wearing a hat. I'm known for wearing a hat. Michelle so, Obama becoming water bottle. Water $25. Bottle. You Christ. cannot. So the craven. Even but Ben Shapiro has, point, a, has a mug that he charges what is it, $20 for, but he has liberal tears on it and all that. You know, yeah, my, like, my, like my point here is sorry, the point, the, the point I'm making is that none of these mainstream media outlets have thought to make fun or to call out the Obamas for this unbelievable, craven greed. Like, it's craven. I, you know, Obama, there comes a point at which you've had enough money. Well, not you, sir. Yeah. Not you, sir. But if sir. Melania looks sideways, it's instant criticism. Yeah, vapid. You, you remember, vapid. You know, How dare you? Sorry, can I just say, The Guardian, shame on you. Well, I'm, shame I, on let's you. have the last word to Anne Coulter, the great critic Anne Coulter. Please. Uh, you know, Anna, Anna Navarro, who was the uh, Latino... Republican, oh, who, then, yes. who then became yes. this anti-Trumper, and he was, yes. you know, uh, and is now looking pretty stupid. But she's a CNN call or a contributor, and uh, she she called uh, Melania stupid. Oh God, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. A Republican, she, you know. Yeah, I bet. And, and what a uh, feminist herself. Uh, yeah, I'm Republican sure. strategist, right? Uh, allegedly. Yeah. And uh, as Anne Coulter said, women who look like Anna Navarro always call women who look like Melania Trump stupid. <sighs> Very tough we will film. move on. Tough words. We We're will move on. on. We're moving on. We'll move on. I'll move on very quickly. I, I, I obviously am appealed by. I'm about, appalled by that, 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 that film. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just merely quoting it for. That's to right. be, So we can all be appalled because yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't take any pleasure from that. Exactly. Quote. Oh my god. I really. I'm still. I'm still kind of reeling from reading out the fact <laughs> that she has created a notebook that has pages on it saying, "List ten things that you saw why would on you the way to the office." But why would you need to list your your top ten playlist? You can play your playlist. It's on your. It's no, on no, your. No, you're going to have it all the one thing called becoming so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to quickly quickly go through the recipe for today and it really isn't a recipe but i have a recipe and i have and i will put it up um but basically you know we had this problem yesterday right we got back from we had been in washington dc then why we were we in washington dc we were because we won a prize for the impact ah. 2019 award for being fabulous yes not making we, an impact and making an impact and we're very very proud of that so we get back we had to go then we had we had some business and we had to go to we were in florida and we just got back and really tired, didn't want to get a takeaway and didn't want to go out and didn't, you know, wanted to make, and we thought, okay, what are we going to do? And so here's what you do when you're there, when you feel like that. We, we did go shopping very briefly because I thought I really want to eat home cooked food. So we cooked um, roast chicken dinner with roasted vegetables in the oven. And, you know, it is, it's a, it, basically it's fast food. All yeah. right, it's not fast like in 20 minutes, right? It's an hour and a half. But my God, it's all done. There's very little work to be done. And you sit and the smells are great. But here's the thing that's very funny. The thing to do, right? And that all, and everyone says this, and by the way, and it does work, is crank up that oven of yours to 400, to 450 if you can. Mm -hmm. Even 500, by the way. And then and, and get your chicken, dry the chicken. Dry the chicken very well, inside and out. L very, very liberally. Um, pepper and salted. It's mm -hmm. quite one of the liberally things that we ever do, really. Yes. Very liberally pepper and salted after it's been dry and then give it a nice, and also you can give it, sorry, before you do the outside with pepper and salt, rub it with oil or with butter and then lashings, and lashings and salt and pepper. pepper. And then in the cavity, make sure, first of all, get your hand into the cavity of the chicken, make sure that there isn't any um, like giblets or like um, internal organs of the chicken, pull them out. And by the way, if yeah, little trick for anyone with a cat, I was pulling them out and I was going to keep them in the fridge because they're, by the way, the liver, the chicken liver is really good for making bolognese sauce. I'll talk about that another day. But I just looked at the kittens and I was thinking, you know what? They'd love that. The cats would love that raw meat. So right. I cut up. And I think you felt a bit guilty. And I felt a bit guilty because we'd been away. So I cut up the chicken liver actually for them and my god were they happy little campers they so were. chop 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 but i've chopped it up nice and small for them but anyway so then you um once that once that oven has cranked up really hot bang that in there oh sorry before you do that sorry i would throw a bunch of you can throw whatever you've got in the kitchen into the cavity of the chicken for example uh, a lemon some garlic some ginger i put in uh, a couple of a, a bit of an apple because that, that's all i had um you could put some onions in there just to give some nice it'll 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 really enhance the the flavor and then around the chicken put your nice root vegetables bang in there loads of potato 
carrots, sweet potato. Chop them up quite small. You don't have to cut, chop them up quite small if you put them in at the beginning, Phil. And I know uh, Phil now has been a bit critical of me because I, was not, I didn't say anything. He's a bit critical because I left, I was very tired and I didn't put the vegetables in quickly enough. But I would put the vegetables in nice and big at the beginning because they're going to be in there for an hour and a half and they're going to soak up all those nice juices from the chicken. And take the chicken out. Now, one thing that might happen, make sure that your yes. oven is really clean. If your oven isn't really clean, it'll start to smoke and you could end up with the fire alarm going off, which could be a real pain in the arse. It didn't happen to us, by the way. Because well, we opened not. every door and every window in and the I house. I shouldn't have used the word A with whatever I said just there. But basically, you can open all the windows and let the smoke out and whatever. But honestly, it, it makes the, crisp, the skin super, super crispy. Bring You can, after about half an hour, you can bring that temperature down to about 350 and then just let it cook. As I said, the whole thing is going to take about an hour and a half. Take the whole juicy mess out and it'll be so gorgeous. T- by the way, take it out after half an hour maybe and tip it over and let the juices come out of the cavity of the, of the chicken uh, to let all the vegetables get gorgeous yeah. in that. Get just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And it's such a lovely meal and it's so much easier and so much nicer than eating out. And actually, the, because you've got it in this really high temperature, the, the chicken remains really, really moist. So I'd highly recommend that. It's, it's really gorgeous. Great. And well, then we want to talk just very briefly about um, TVs and movies. And you were... You were oh. so, what, so something really interesting has happened in Madam President and Mrs. Maisel. Well, uh, funny, I, I noticed it just in the media a little bit that they were talking a lot about the Equal Rights Amendment, that that, that has sort of been rearing its head. This is Phyllis Schlafly's, yeah. you know, tour, well, it, tour de force it, yes, in a way. Yes, tour de force. So the Equal Rights Amendment was, uh, you know, uh, an amendment to the Constitution that was popular in the 60s and 70s, you know, Equal Rights Women, which sounds... Um, it's very good. You see, liberals are very good at this. They have these things that sound really good. Yeah. Like Planned Parenthood sounds great, you Who's know. Who, and you know, pro-choice. Who's yeah, not pro-choice. against choice? Everyone, who, would, who wouldn't be against that? So Equal Rights Amended. How could you be against, how against that, Salem? Equal how Rights could, for Women. How well, could you be? the problem with that is that you then... Uh, you, well, for, as Phyllis Schlafly said, when women look for custody of their children... The, you know the automatic assumption that the woman, or you know that the woman gets the child, not the automatic assumption, but there's always a, a bias in favour of the woman. That's gone. That's the mo- out the, the window. Mother, uh, yeah. uh, 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 the mother loses that. Uh, the mother loses the right to alimony. The mother, uh, you know, th- that. For example, uh, at your college, right? So the football team takes in that brings in ninety million a year, and uh, it's you know fifty million is spent upon it. Suddenly. Then you have to spend fifty million on on, on women's sports. Uh, you know, I know that Title Nine. That's the problem. Another problem with Title Nine. It's the same thing. Equal rights is fine. I mean, in California here now, you cannot have a a hairdresser that does both men and women because we have an equal rights. Uh, equal customer rights amendment here in California. You can't charge differently for can, a woman's haircut than a man's man's haircut. Yeah. So 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 therefore, no one will cut both. No yeah. no uh, salad. So you're going to actually you're going to destroy a lot of advantages that women have, uh, and 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 you know just different uh, ways that society has 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 evolved, and and consumer and, and and businesses have evolved to help women and to cater to women because of the equal rights constitution and the, and, and there's just going to be so many ways where this is going to be a boon for lawyers and a disaster uh, for women actually so that, but that's a very it's a very hard sell that oh, it's, yeah it, it's much more complicated actually to explain it even though it's a very justified thing what Phyllis Schlafly did the war that she had against the ERA and that she rightfully was on the right side of and that she won because great, she was so actually, the great thing for Phyllis Schlafly was that there was a war in Vietnam at the oh, time yeah. and there was the draft and under and, the, re- and suddenly, yeah, suddenly under the regal people, rights amendment you can m- women can be drafted just as quickly as men yeah, and that was the and that killer. Suddenly, that suddenly became that that made it very clear for people what they were what they were really up yes. against. So here's what's happened, and it's so interesting. Uh, so, it, sorry. And by the way, it feels almost coordinated. Film is it possible that this is coordinated? Well, it's very let, let's, odd. Let, let us go, let, explain the history. Congress passed it, of course, and the Republicans were all in favor because they're idiots back then. And uh, the Democrats and the Senate passed it, and then it has to be ratified by two thirds of the states which is something like 37 states. It was ratified by 30 states, and Phyllis Schlafly said, this cannot, this woman said, this cannot go on. And Phyllis Schlafly, who I've met once, and you've met a few times, yes, she yes. died last year, I think it was yeah. a, a two, two years ago, a wonderful woman. Amazing. She said, this cannot 
go on. And she launched a campaign. She went and she took to the road. And she took to the road. And, and she, she did a, gra- a massive ground she game na- and spoke to people. And it's and it's funny. They're and stealing that, by the way. They're stealing that in Madam Secretary. Yes. They stole that very, that very thing that she did. And stopped it. And, you know, I've noticed uh, uh, recently there's been a lot of talk about the Equal Rights Amendment. But, uh, so we are now... I was watching Madam Secretary last night, the series finale, and actually it was a really weird series finale because the actual dramatic denouement was in the previous episode, and but this one was kind of wrapping everything up and her going forward, and the thing was she was going to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed. That was because she was a good person, and she'd been through a lot, and that was her big thing now. And finally, okay, that's fine. Then you go over to the marvellous Miss Maisel. On and streaming on, on Amazon. And... Suddenly, the one is down in her luck, the, the comedian. She doesn't know what she's going to do. She's got this job doing a radio ad for some political thing. And it turns out to be for Phyllis, during Phyllis Schlafly's program. And her father says to her, don't go to her. She's anti-Semitic. And there's a big thing, big drama. And she walks out of this because Phyllis Schlafly's anti-Semitic. Now, that is a lie. Phyllis Schlafly, and, and it's very interesting. It's very, it actually has a relevance to Trump. Phyllis Schlafly was against elites. And as she said, northern elites, coastal elites. And of course, you know, they're, they're implying that that's Ju- New York Jews or, or, or LA Jews, whatever it is. I mean, the biggest, the people who are most in favor of abortion in the 1970s were Northern Republican elites. And, you know, actually very interesting. They were all Protestant. They were all wasps. And th- they basically thought Catholics were having too many children. Immigrants were having too many children. Those Northern uh, Republican elites allied with the Democratic elites as well. And she saw, you know, Democrats will, you know, Democrats will be, in fact, there's a lot of Democrats who are pro-life, but Democrats will be Democrats. But if your enemy, she always reeled against the internal enemy, which was the Northern elites. And this is, that's why she was one of the early Trump supporters because oh, yeah. she was always against the elites and Trump was against the elites and that's why she supported him. So they implying that her anti-elitism was anti-Semitism. It wasn't. It's, it's a, a lie. lie. It's a lie. But... It's another way of making the Equal Rights Amendment. As you say, it almost sounds coordinated, Anne. Yeah, it almost sounds coordinated that you have... Um, by the way, of course, we, as we you know, show, you know, know, revealed in this uh, programme prior to this, yeah. uh, in an earlier episode um, where you know, Planned Parenthood have somebody working in Hollywood... Full-time. Full-time, and has, who, uh, who claims that she's already affected 150 scripts and t- uh, TV shows and movies. So I think there's a possibility, well, Phelan, I'm going way out on a limb here, that someone is in there affecting scripts and movies maybe and getting pla- people to write about the ERA. Maybe it's a Planned Parenthood person because that'd be another way of ensuring that abortion can't be can't be outlawed is to have an equal rights amendment. You know, you could put, you could, because there is no constitutional right to abortion even though the Supreme Court found one in the early 70s and a lot of those people who voted for abortion were wasp uh, ish, waspish uh, Supreme Court judges, Republicans. Uh, so maybe it's maybe it's the Planned Parenthood person who's who's trying to establish this constitutional right to abortion. But anyway, watch we're out, running, folks! The Equal Rights Amendment is coming that's going to be the near next you. So, so you heard it first here. We're so we're wrapping up right now. Just to remind everyone, please to go to um, hear the IG report dot com. Hear the IG report dot com to and, hear it in full. Hear the full unfiltered, unfiltered, not yeah. cherry picked by the mainstream media. Hear the IG truth. report, beautifully read, fabulously read. You know, really, we're amazed by the artistry and the. And just the, uh, you know, the amazing voice, beautiful voice of Adam Baldwin. We're so glad that he agreed to do this for us. Um, so, so please go and subscribe there and give us five stars and all of that. Yes. And we'll talk to you the next time. And by the way, um, yeah, and don't forget to make the roast chicken and please don't set off the fire alarm. Yes. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank it was you. Great. All See the best. You. Bye. Bye-bye.